So we are on the module refuge in the three jewels. And I thought since um, we planned to do this meditation refuge in the three jewels twice, this week and next week, and we obviously don't have so much time uh, on those Thursday meditations. So I thought that today we're going to have some fun with it and focus more on the on the suffering <laughs> and on samsara. And then um, Lars, if you allow, then next time we will focus more on the qualities of the Buddha. So we will brush over the qualities of the Buddha and why Buddha, Dharma and Sangha are suitable refuge, but we will not um, we will not spend so much time. So just so you guys know, so you don't get disappointed, we will try to get a little bit of an experience of samsara tonight and um, think about refuge just a little bit, but next time we'll do it the other way around. So that we, we will then be less focusing on the, on the suffering and more on the actual jewels of refuge. And also another um, disclaimer, I generally think that this topic sometimes might be difficult, especially when you're reading in the meditation or in the, in the books, that the reason why we take refuge is fear. And I think we, we um, Westerners don't really appreciate being motivated by fear. <laughs> And we feel like you don't need to spook me out into doing something, you know, and things like this. So I, I think I personally don't like samsara and I would love to get out of it, but I don't like to think about it in the categories of fear, but more in the categories of being motivated to get out of it because I don't appreciate it so much. So I will try to guide us through this meditation a little bit along those lines so we can get a little bit of an experience for ourselves. I don't know if I will succeed or not. It will also depend on you because samsara is our common experience. We're all right in the middle of it and we're experiencing it and watching others around us experiencing it too. So we'll try to go through it in a little bit more structured way and see, see where we get with it. But my goal today or our goal today is not to end up having a stomach ache and being fearful at all. <laughs> the, the goal is to kind of see our reality for what it is, to allow for the possibility that it might even get worse. And I think in today's day, it's not so hard to imagine that, even though even without trying to imagine hell realms and, and you know, other, other realms. I think we see enough suffering already in this realm, in fact. So uh, we will try to think about that and um, we'll go from there and see where we get. But before we do that, I thought we'd spend a couple of minutes just relaxing and we will, because we're all probably coming out of whatever our duties were today. And we will do it today um, by focusing on uh, or, or visualizing our body as hollow. So it's a really good meditation for those who are aspiring or maybe even practicing tantric meditations. Um, I just last week also heard uh, from Venerable Rene Foisi actually that it's also even good for like, you know, for success of our purification meditations, because it's really difficult to purify our mind or pure thinking that we are, have energy flowing through our body when we are focusing more on the solid part of our body or the physical part of our body. So we'll spend just two minutes and just try to you know, enjoy it because it's, it's a nice uh, way to, to, so try to just close your eyes for a moment, get comfortable, you know, sitting in whatever position you like to be sitting. And you have two choices. You can either imagine your body simply being spacious and, and hollow. So you imagine you know, the, the organs and whatever our body consists of, the solidity disappears and you become more spacious. So you become kind of like a balloon a little bit. Um, and you imagine it like that, or you can imagine your body being made of light and kind of expanding in all directions. And we do that just 
you know, making it our own. So make it your own experience, make it joyful, enjoyable, and we'll try to do it for about two minutes just to kind of come here to the cushion and to relax a little bit and leave our day behind us. And if you are wondering what color of light, if you are imagining yourself being made of light, then if you have a deity, like if you have a tantric deity, then you can imagine this light to be the color of your, your tantric deity. If not, then you can see what kind of light you feel like being. So you can choose maybe a blue light or red light or green light. And if none of that uh, looks appealing, then you can also imagine yourself being white, joyful, bright light. And if you are imagining the balloon option, then also the balloon can be filled with different colors of energy of light. Now we try not to lose this experience of the little lightness, the little playfulness and less solidity and a little more spaciousness. And we'll recite together, uh, taking refuge and generating bodhicitta and think about it as our motivation for the practice. So try this one time not to, for it to be just da 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 da, just the text, but uh, we try to really experience it or, or, or you know, recite it straight from our hearts. So for that, we'll do it in English and we'll do it a little slower maybe than usually. So we recite together. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Supreme Assembly. By my merits of generosity and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit transmigratory beings. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly by my merits of generosity and so forth. May I become a Buddha to benefit transmigratory beings. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly by my merits of generosity and so forth. May I become a Buddha to benefit transmigratory beings. We think maybe these few minutes that we spent in the next few minutes that we spent together in the meditation, may they help, help us to achieve exactly this goal. So may they be 
essential in us, making the next step on the path to enlightenment, not just for ourselves, but also for all the beings that are that exist in the universe. So now for start, I wanted uh, I've wanted for us to look at our own life, at this experience of this lifetime. And we will try to do it by going backwards through our mind moments. You know, this meditation, we have done this in this course before. So tracing our life experience, our mind moments backwards all the way to our childhood. But this time I wanted you to specifically focus, not on things that are specifically standing out, but think about all the problems and sufferings that you are experiencing right now. So we can focus even on this moment right now and think about um, the reality of our existence with problems with mental health, with physical health, with colleagues, with jobs, with relationships, our own experience of this of this lifetime at the moment. And how many moments of real joy or happiness we have right now each day. And how many moments of dissatisfaction, moments of not getting what we want and getting what we didn't ask for we have each day. Now try to move backwards throughout your lifetime, back to being a few years younger, 10 years younger, 20 years younger, all the way to your childhood with the same focus, just kind of look how much true happiness you have experienced so far and how much problems and dissatisfaction you have experienced thus far. Is this a pleasant experience full of lightness, happiness, joy, love, compassion, bonding with others? Or is the majority of your experience something quite opposite? Now we'll do something that is usually not done in this meditation. So we'll go back to us being a baby. And also there we were hungry, we were cold, we had different pains, we couldn't express it. We spent lots of time crying our eyes out. Then we'll think about the moment of birth and how difficult it is, how painful. And then we'll spend a second in our mom's womb and then we'll go back a step. We came to that womb from Bardo. So from the state between two lifetimes and then try to imagine yourself. I mean, many of us or none of us maybe have the memory of it, but 
because we are human being in this lifetime, then there's a good probability that we're also a human being in the previous life. And imagine yourself as a person who died in the previous lifetime, had some kind of sickness, maybe an accident. Maybe you're a man, maybe you were a woman. And tries to try to, in your imagination, trace back through that lifetime. So from this old age and aching bones, through raising your children, having all kinds of problems. You also maybe had a wife, maybe you had a partner, maybe you had a husband, you had a job. And if you are experiencing different pains and troubles in this lifetime, then it's very probable that the same happened in the previous one. So the same kinds of problems, the same kind of diseases, the same kind of relationship issues, mental health issues, suffering, maybe even war. You were also a child, you were going to school, you had the stress with your peers and with your teachers. Maybe there was poverty, maybe you were poor and hungry. And all that came from being a baby. It came from your mother's womb during a very painful, very scary experience of birth. And then your mind went, came there from Bardo. So we don't have much time today to do that, but if you have time and you do this meditation on your own, try to go 10 lifetimes, 20 lifetimes, maybe even a hundred lifetimes. And at some point you were probably also in an animal realm maybe even in hell realm, for sure also in God's realm. It's all already happened a thousand, ten thousand, and a trillion times. And look where it got you. So look where we are today. We are definitely not Buddha. We definitely have a lot of suffering today. But we do have a precious human rebirth today, which we know very well after the last course of Venerable Rovina can end any second. And at the moment, we have zero, exactly zero control about what happens next. So we know we'll get to Bardo. If we have the merit, then we will have another human rebirth. So we'll get the same crap that we have now. But I could get much worse than that. We could get into much worse circumstances. So even with a human rebirth, if you look at the world around us, we could be sitting not in our living room, but in a bomb shelter right now. We could be in a hospital dying of a lethal disease right now. We could be in a mental institution. We could be in prison. And we think whatever happens next, it's not gonna be over. We're going to die. We're gonna to be reborn again. And it's just gonna keep going forever until we stop it. And another thing to be very aware of is that this is our personal experience, but we're not alone experiencing it. Every single being in samsara is on the same boat.
So he's suffering just like us or even worse right now and will continue to suffer until they get help. So if there is anything worth anything in this lifetime and in this existence is to free ourselves from this cycle and also be empowered to free others from this cycle as well. And since we've already tried on our own for millions, for endless number of lifetimes, and so far have not been particularly successful, that's the moment to start looking for help or a guide because we need to a way out. And that guide is the Buddha and his teachings, the Dharma. And our friends who help us on the way, the Sangha. And we'll skim through it. Like I said, why is the Buddha a suitable refuge for us? Why is the Buddha the suitable guide, the suitable direction? Somebody who can show us a way out of this? Well, it's good to think about those four qualities of the Buddha. And when you, we will spend some more time next time thinking about it, but when you, I will just read them to you and you can contemplate a little bit because it is amazing. So the Buddha is somebody who is completely free of all fears. Buddha has skillful means to free others from all fears. So not only is Buddha not afraid, but it also has the means to free us and all beings from fear. Buddha has great compassion for all living beings without exception, whether or not they are close or kind to him, or maybe not. Equal. And Buddha fulfills the aims and acts to help all living beings without any exceptions, whether or not they have helped him or not. We'll stop here and dedicate those few minutes that we spent with each other. So that we lose whatever delusions and whatever distorted views of reality we have and we see the reality as it really is. And so that someday we get sick of it and we also find proper guide, and proper refuge to help us out. Because when we are out, we will be able to develop the exact qualities of the Buddha that we just thought about. And not only that, we will become perfectly capable, completely powerful to help others to do the same. So that samsara is completely emptied of all suffering. <laughs>